Surgeon-guided, technology-driven, robotic arm-assisted surgical technology for hip and knee replacements. Available at Kansas Spine and Specialty Hospital. Proud sponsor of KPTS. Public Television for Kansas. The following program is brought to you by TZ Productions. Celebrating KPTS's nearly 50 years of community support in South Central Kansas. Great starts here on KPTS. All right, everybody, it is time for another half hour of Hatterberg's People. This week, we have a brand new Hatterberg's People story that has never aired. In fact, Larry just finished it. That's right. The world premiere of my all new mini documentary, Banking on Art, is just minutes away. But first, just one of them things could happen to anybody. Three bandits invaded his home, tied him up, and stole his car. He seemed to take it all in stride, but Ira Mogg had just been through a harrowing ordeal. Larry got the exclusive. That interview is coming up. Also, give me a pop. People come in, you know, just to see her. If, if she happens to not be in the store at the time, well, where's Harley? Scandia, Kansas was the place with the helpful hardware dog. Now, Harley was the golden lab, and he was the favorite employee at Rainey's Home Center. Well, people would just come in just to watch her work. We'll have this fun story coming up. Hello, I'm Susan Peters. And I'm Larry Hatterberg. We'll have those stories and more. The stories queued up, ready to roll. Hatterberg's People starts right now. These stories are like old friends. Their lives radiate from the screen like prophets of the past. They were teachers, but not in a classroom. Instead, they taught about life to those around them who cared to listen, and I was their student. Imagine your quiet, simple life turned upside down by a gun pointed at your face. Well, that is exactly what happened when some uninvited visitors invaded the Ira Mogg farm back in 1985. They tied up Ira and his wife, they cut the phone cord, and stole their car. Fortunately, the Moggs were able to break free and run for help. Now, I stopped by to visit just a few days later. Hell issue, we had a lot of rain, and it looks better than it does most years. Ira Mogg lives on this farm in the rolling hills south of Wilson, Kansas. Until 10 days ago, few outsiders came down this road. Oh, the job gone. Look at how they stripped that leaf. Then the world came to his door in the form of three desperate people who wanted to stash a getaway car on his farm. You don't argue with them guns. Just one of them things could happen to anybody. You know, as calm as Ira is, he could have been talking about these tomatoes sunning themselves on the back porch or the proliferation of wild sunflowers in his animal pens. But no, he's talking about being held at gunpoint like it's no big deal. I don't think I'd pay any more attention to him today than I did Saturday. I, I never watch out the driveway see who's coming in. Because, well, what could you do? You couldn't do anything. You know, you read about it happening to other people, and uh, you, you never think it'll happen to you. But uh, when it does happen, why, well, I was just taking the place of somebody else, that is all. They go over there to get a drink. There's uh, four more big ones down here along the creek, but they won't come up. They stay down there. I've always told my wife, if you read about them things where people drive in and tie some people up and take their car or take some of their possessions. And I told the missus, I said, we live out in the country so far, they can never find us. They found us. No. One of them things. Ira Mogg's farm is just like your grandpa's. An old one-holer built 50 years ago. 
a clothesline where grandma hangs her wash. It's home, and Ira says he'll never move despite the recent violent intrusions. Oh, we got everything out here they got in town. And uh, a lot of things that they've got in town we haven't got, we don't need. Quiet, peaceful, most of the time. <laughs> Ira passed away just a year after that terrible event. Now, the three kidnappers were all caught and convicted and served several years in prison. Now, they've each been released just in the past few years. Mm -hmm. and when I talked to Ira about his, what happened to him, he was as calm as, he was, as if he was talking about taking his laundry in. Really? I mean, was, he said, yeah, it could have happened to anybody, as you just heard in the story. Wow, it's too, it's too bad that it. happened in the last year of his life, too. I, well, it, it, it was. Probably uh, affected him more than he realized. I'm sure it did, but just being able to meet him, his calmness was really a breath of fresh air. A lot of courage mm -hmm. there. As they say, good help can be so hard to find. A small town hardware store solved that problem with a loyal employee that never complained, never asked for a raise, and never took a vacation. Now her name was Harley. Go get the duct tape. Hurry up. Harley works in a hardware store. Harley does a great job until the pesky media follower. Then she does just what some politicians do. She growls. She snarls. She threatens. And then she runs. But then she sees she can't hide. So she attacks our furry microphone. But unlike some politicians, Harley always completes her job. Scandia, Kansas, in Republic County, founded in 1868 by a group of Swedes. It's a little town of 421, plus Harley. And this is where she works, at Richard and Sony Rainey's hardware store in downtown Scandia. <laughs> yep, there she is. <laughs> Harley has been greeting folks for four years at this little hardware oh, store. Perfect. This 65 pound, 22 inch tall <laughs> yellow lab is an employee. She even has her own executive chair. Harley, get me the WD-40. But it's how she works. That's what people love to watch. She gets more press and more notoriety than we ever get. Good girl. Once she started doing these tricks, our kids have uh, got real tired of us talking about the dog. <laughs> Harley, get the shims. They think we've kind of gone overboard a little bit. <laughs> Good girl. She really does understand so much of, of our lives and what we do. Give me a pop. People come in, you know, just to see her. If, if she happens to not be in the store at the time, well, where's Harley? Good girl. What's really fun is when somebody hadn't heard about her and wants duct tape or something. Go get the duct tape. Duct tape, hurry up. And we've had a lot of comments on that, like, yeah, really, no way. Here. Come on. One guy, is, hurry up. She was coming back with the duct tape. He said, well, I'll be darn. <laughs> Good girl. Ever since we've had her, people just love her. She's, she's a lots of fun, and people come in just to see her. What do you see out there? Come here. Well, it was fun while it lasted, but a few years ago, after a good long life, Harley was promoted to that big hardware store in the sky. Then the Rannies sold the store and moved away. Now, it was a fun period in history that came and went in the sleepy little village of Scandia, Kansas. Now, people would come in from all over just to watch this dog take stuff off the counters and that bring it so, so they could check out it. An amazing dog. Everybody loved the dog and the, and uh, What it was amazes just a wonderful me, place. Larry, is that not only did you find Scandia, but you found this hardware store. I've never even heard of Scandia. Well, see, that's the, that's the fun thing about my job. Exactly. Is going around and finding these little places that make a difference in your life. Well, I love it, love okay. it. Okay, now the big moment. Da -da -da -da. Uh, <laughs> An all new Hatterberg's People story 
that Larry just finished, and it is a doozy. Now, this is all about a local banker who has amassed the largest collection of Kansas art in the world. In fact, his bank doubles as an art museum filled with some of the most spectacular paintings and sculptures you'll ever see in one place. When I look at a painting or a piece of art, I like the design of it, I like the colors in it. If I like it, it brings joy to me. I have no ambition at all to be an artist or to be able to recreate something that maybe I've seen or paint on my own. Mike Michaelis is president and CEO of Emprise Financial Corporation located in Wichita, Kansas. With the main bank downtown plus 40 satellite banking operations, the financial empire is vast. But in the last few decades, banking has almost taken a back seat to art. I appreciate the skills that have gone into making any of the pieces of art that we have, seeing that I have no skill at all. It's uh, a joy to see what others can do. It is such a joy that Michaelis has collected what is considered to be the largest collection of Kansas art in the world, much of it on display in all of the Emprise banks. Really, when I got serious uh, with the art was when we moved in this building in 1997 and lots of wall space. The bank was much bigger than when I started. I was older than when I started and a lot more mature and decided at that point in time that we ought to get serious about collecting art and we needed to have a focus and Kansas artwork made lots of sense. But growing up, no one would have guessed that art would impact Mike Michaelis' life. I was born in Russell, lived there till I was eight. It was just idyllic, I think. I mean, it was a wonderful way to grow up. Being able at four or five or six years old to ride my bicycle downtown across Highway 40 and going to a movie and you know, there was a candy store next door and going into that and coming home and we just, we kind of had the, the run of the town. Later, the Michaelis family moved to Wichita, and Mike's competitive drive was strong. I started playing basketball in seventh grade. And then I went to East High School, and I played basketball there, and we had really good teams. In college at KU, he continued playing basketball, but still no interest in art. I tell people I can't draw a stick man, and that's pretty true. Uh, First time I can really think of being interested in art and paying attention to a painting on a wall was the summer I spent in Europe. I think that made an impression on me. What also made an impression was a young classmate he first met in junior high named D. Peachy. Both went to KU and they were married in 67, but still art for both was foreign. We neither one came from backgrounds where um, art was important. We neither one had been to an art museum growing up. Basically, I never thought about taking an art class. But then something changed. As Mike's career progressed, he began to notice art with the purchase of some watercolor paintings. But when the business became Emprise Bank with many locations, Mike really got serious. You know, when I started, I really thought we'd find 100 artists that I thought were of the right quality and significant enough to be in the collection. I was a little naive. Uh, today we're up at 800 different artists. But I had no idea from that it would turn into this. 3,000 pieces of art and 800 artists. 
you get deeper into it, and you get more particular about what you buy, and I don't know, it just got away from me. <laughs> and it's, it's about a sickness at this point in time. You almost can't help yourself. Inside the Emprise Banks, the art collection is stunning. Every wall, nearly every shelf, on every level, art. I've picked literally every piece of art that's in the collection, and I, I don't buy any work that, that I don't like and, and appreciate when I look at it. But with all that art in all those locations, how do you know where each piece is? My job is to keep track of it. I, I, people say curator, I say wrangler. Nancy Batts computer programs keep track of each piece of art, the artist, and every detail of each unique work. We had no idea that there would be that much wonderful art out there. I mean, we were thinking four or 500 pieces probably, and here we are, <laughs> 20 years later. I work in an art museum, but fortunately we have a bank that helps pay for the art museum. <laughs> it's, it's an adventure and it's, it's great. This is a painting done by uh, President Eisenhower. It was done in 1962. As we all know, he grew up in Abilene and was a bit of a painter. I looked long and hard for this piece of work. Working in a building that I consider an art gallery is something I never dreamed I would, would have the opportunity to do. I look at it, study it, and I learn something new about it almost every, every time I look at it. It's a non-monetary benefit that no one else has. We get to choose, if you're in an office, you get to choose the artwork. It's a joy to be able to walk in here and see the artwork that we have. Most people that come to my office are surprised that we have the uh, caliber of art that we have, that we have such a unique variety of art. It's not just one medium or one style, such a variety. And most people are very jealous, actually, uh, that we have such an incredible environment that we get to work in. There is so much art in the banks that some of it must be kept in high security storage inside the downtown Emprise Bank. We have about 3,000 works, and I think about 40% of them are hanging, so we've got, I don't know, 15, 1,600 pieces of work that are in our storage unit. We have two storage units. I've got to know most of the artwork just by how it's framed. You know, we have work in Hayes, Kansas, and Council Grove, and all of our different branches. And so when I go out and see those pieces, uh, some of which I haven't seen for a while, yeah, it's exactly like seeing an old friend. And so as, as, as I do, as I walk around, I mean, I, I just get joy out of, out of looking at the work. And sometimes you remember all a story about the artist and how we acquired the art, but just having it around and looking at it, and it, it just changes the ambiance of the building and how I feel and I think how others feel as they, as they work and live here. Photographs also a major part of the collection. This one by Bill Sneed of the Washington Post. He said he just happened to be sent to a news conference, had no idea really who he was going to see or what he was going to photograph. And this is the first news conference that the Beatles had in the United States. It makes me swell with pride for um, kind of what dad has done with the organization and the company. And um, I think the role that the art plays in that. Matt Michaelis continues the family tradition of Emprise Bank management. Now Matt loves photography, and his office wall was created by his wife Nancy, who has a background in art and television journalism. He loves photography, and so we just went through the collection, we picked up all the best black and white stuff we could find, and then I found a way to, to do it as a gallery wall. I began to look through the collection and just found a tremendous number of images that hadn't been on display, many of them hadn't been framed, but that I loved. Yes, she, she was the one that finally selected images and laid them out on the wall, made sure that they um, kind of all fit together and, and had some themes in them as well. The Michaelis Art Collection has a wow factor to it, not only for those who work there, but for those who see it for the first time. I think I was blown away. I don't know if I was prepared to see this 
quantity of art in one space. And then you think about all the branches. I think it brings joy to our bank. That makes me feel good. Our people really enjoy seeing it, probably each for a different reason. Uh, I'm, I'm probably not one of those educated very well in the arts, but uh, to have this opportunity is, is just amazing. But what I do notice is that when we have guests to the building, either vendors, new employees, almost everyone comments on it and they're amazed by it and they're drawn in by it. But it's more than the art. When I have watched Mike get involved with the artists themselves and really an interest in developing relationships with the artists, that has been amazing to me and I think that's an area where um, it's been an enrichment for both of us. That enrichment is a two-way street. Kansas artists whose work Mike has collected say he has changed the Kansas art world. <laughs> he's just so awesome. Uh, he, he not only will he, he's not just like collecting names, you know, he's not trying to just uh, fill, you know, with all the names that he's getting. He's actually, you know, trying to, to put together this collection that really shows not just um, the artist, but, you know, some really high high standards of art and so to be included in that is like incre incredible. For a long time I think Mike was probably the biggest buyer and he really gave us a sense of uh, pride in our city and because we felt like we were being supportive from within and it also gave us the the energy and sort of the financial and creative capital to try to move beyond as well. To be in a collection with those other artists is, is pretty extraordinary. He's really given, at least the artists here at Fish House, a sense of a real motivation to create new work and to interest him, in some cases specifically, because he has been such a faithful and such an interested consumer of art, as well as friend. Yeah, I think artists in general have been very generous with their thank yous and their thoughts about our collection. And, and, and the other way, I mean, I have learned a lot from the artists. I have met people that, you know, in my sports life, I would not have met. So I have on numerous occasions walked into companies that had no art on their wall and I, I have this overwhelming feeling of something is wrong, but I cannot imagine working in an environment without it. Meanwhile at the Michaela's home, Mike and Dee's art collection is spilling over the walls as art becomes the master and the Michaelis's the tenant. We begin to fill all the available wall space and then we begin to fill closets because we had no more wall space. And even now, sometimes I, I think I just have to roll my eyes because Mike's bringing in more pieces and we have no place to put them. To me, the value of the work is, is, the, is the broad expanse of work that we have from Kansas. It goes back to 1885. And so it's just a broad survey of what I think of are the major artists in Kansas. And so the value is not monetary, it's really historical. I don't think I have the same passion and intensity that he does, but I really enjoy the art. For Dee, the art has sparked her own artistic venture. Weaving and fiber art are a powerful force in her creative life. I love to, to just sit and think and do little tiny detail pieces. I took some art classes myself that I don't think I would have had any interest in had I not been involved with Mike and beginning to learn about artists. In the banking world, mergers and acquisitions are part of corporate life. But with this bank, the art collection is as much a part of its identity as the financial end of the business. So what happens in the future to the art if the bank is sold? There are zero plans for a sale, but none of us are around forever. The art is not going away by any stretch. Um, I don't know that I'll ever be as uh, prolific a collector as my a father, but, is but art is really core to our company and, and to what we do. Um, we love working in an environment surrounded by beautiful things. At least while I'm here, um, the art collection will stay. Uh, I don't know that the family will own the bank forever, uh, but my hope is that if when we, as a family, when we sell the bank, that we will pull the art out and it will go to a museum here in Kansas. 
A kid from Russell, Kansas, Mike Michaelis, has continued to grow what is now a $1.8 billion financial empire serving 20 communities. But not even he expected he would someday be banking on art. This tall, low-key, nice guy image is real. As real as the world's largest collection of Kansas art. But I've, I've made a lot of really good friends uh, that I wouldn't have made otherwise. We've had a good life. All right, totally worth shooting another Hatterberg's people yeah. for. That man is amazing, and the art Mike has collected is incredible, and the thing that I like most about it is you can be in several towns in Kansas and go into an Emprise Bank and see some of this art. That's absolutely correct, but people don't, I, I really don't think people in Wichita or anywhere in Kansas have an understanding of how <laughs> large this collection is and how important it is to the artistic community. Uh, artists love to have their stuff purchased by the Michaelis family because it says something about Kansas art and they have a place to display it and they treat it with respect, which with Kansas respect. art should have. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to travel around from every uh, you do Enterprise that. Bank location to the next to, uh, to look at made. the museums. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is a wrap this week. If you have a question or comment, send it off to Hatterberg's people at kpts.org. We love hearing from you, and we love having you watch, don't we, Larry? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, I'm Susan Peters. And I'm Larry Hatterberg with the incredible Susan Peters <laughs> at my side. Thanks for spending this time with us. We will see you next time. The preceding program was brought to you by TZ Productions, supporting KPTS and the communities it serves in South Central Kansas. Great starts here on KPTS. For a free copy of this program, become a new member of KPTS for a $40 contribution. If you are already a member, just send $25 for shipping and handling. Be sure to include the program's name, date, and time.